What is going on everybody? Tech Enthusiast here and today I'm going to show you how to set up the new PlayStation 2 emulator for Android called Ether SX2. So firstly I want to mention this emulator is free unlike Daemon PS2 and it is better than Daemon PS2 which uses stolen code, pushes ads and a lot of other nasty stuff. Okay so firstly I want to mention that you will need at least a Snapdragon 845 device. If you do have a powerful phone then head over to Google Play Store. You can search for it or I can leave a link in the description which you can click on. So some of the features include OpenGL and Vulkan support. You can upscale the games to 1080p and beyond that widescreen patches, save states, touchscreen and Bluetooth controller support and uh, it will load games which are in ISO, CHD, CSO, BIN and there is an option for per game settings. So once you launch the app for the very first time you will be greeted by a FAQ. So this emulator has been developed by a developer called Talrath so shout outs to him. So he works on this on his free time. So at the point of this video this emulator is in its very early stages. There are some missing features that are very useful but most of the games are playable right now. Now to use this emulator your games should already be backed up. Please do not ask where to download games from. There are guides on how to dump your games. Secondly you will need a BIOS to use this emulator and again please do not ask where to download it from. If you go into Google you will find methods on how to obtain the BIOS file. So there will be occasions where the game runs slow. There may be a few ways to mitigate this. Make sure the fast mem is enabled in system settings. Enable multi-threaded VU1 in system settings. Now if you have a Snapdragon powered phone then you can use the Vulkan renderer. You can try to underclock the CPU by setting the cycle rate to a negative number and the cycle skip to a positive number in system settings. For some games you can try enabling the preload textures and GPU palette conversion options in the graphics settings to improve the performance. There are other options such as customizing the touchscreen controls which you can go into settings and play around with those settings. There are a few more questions down below but I think we've covered the most important ones. Now when you click on next it's going to give you your initial settings. So it's going to ask for which profile to use. So the best one to go for right now would be the optimal safe profile as this will have the best compatibility but the game performance might not be great if your phone is weaker than a Snapdragon 845 phone. The fast unsafe profile may improve frame rates for low end devices but this will break games and you will have inconsistent performance. So other options include game orientation. So when you launch a game, would you want it to launch in portrait, landscape or sensor based? Then it's the game aspect ratio. By default is 4 by 3. You have the option of 16 by 9 and stretch to fill the whole screen. Then there is the theme settings. So you can have light or dark or follow the system settings. Clicking on next will ask you to import the BIOS file. So this is a file you must have to use this emulator. And again please don't ask me where to download it from. So click on import BIOS. Now depending on what phone and file manager you have all you need to do is locate to the directory where you have the BIOS file and then select it. The next step will be to find your game directory. So click on the plus icon. So again find the directory where your games are. In my case I have a folder created called PS2 in my root directory. Go in and tap on allow access to downloads, tap on allow and then next and finally tap on finish and it will scrape for your games. So before starting up any game I'm just going to show you some of these settings. So we're going to click on app settings. Now on the general tab make sure you leave the top three enabled which it is by default. Now heading over to the system tabs make sure you have enable multi-threaded VU1 and enable fast mem is enabled. Now we're going to go over to the graphics tab. Click on GP renderer. So I'm going to select Vulkan as I have a Snapdragon 855 phone. And then if I scroll right to the uh, very bottom, I will find GPU palette conversion, enable that and preload textures as mentioned on the FAQ. I will also enable show VPS so this will show how well the game is running. 
and then you can show the CPU usage as well. So now I'm going to go back to system. Now if you go to the top EE cycle rate, so this is where you can underclock the uh, CPU by using a negative number. I'm not going to play around with these settings right now. And that's pretty much it. So with these settings, I'm going to be running Ratchet and Clank. So I'm going to start off the game with a short cutscene just before the game starts. And as you can see here, this cutscene is playing perfectly fine. No slowdowns at all. Okay, so now we are in game. We have the joystick here and some games do require the d-pad so all you need to do is press the circle button in between the start and select and that will toggle between the d-pad and then the joystick so i'm just going to click on the pause button here to bring up the uh, settings go into the um, graphic settings and i'm just going to play around with the aspect ratio and i'm going to select 16 by 9 and so far yep Everything is working perfectly fine. As you can see, we do have black borders on this side. So again, I'm gonna go back into graphic settings. And this time I'm gonna go to two times uh, internal resolution and go for stretch. And if you click on the D-pad icon here and scroll to the bottom, you can use the um, control pad with the overlay disabled. As you can see here the game is fully stretched and once again I'm not noticing any difference from what it was at default and the control pad is configured automatically you don't have to do anything yourself. Another option is to go in and click on save state so what that means it will save like a snapshot of where you were and if you were to die and start from the beginning you can go back into options and click on load state and it will take you back to exactly where you saved the game so this is very convenient and generally at two times internal resolution i think this game is running fine yes there are some frame dips but do remember this emulator right now is at an alpha stage and so far i am very impressed now obviously if you have phones with the snapdragon 870 or the triple eight i'm sure this you know would run perfectly fine with probably no uh, slowdowns at all there are obviously other phones that do not use snapdragon cpu so they will have the mali gpu these phones cannot use the vulcan renderer so you'll have to use opengl or the software renderer so do expect slowdowns and graphical errors which i have first handedly experienced on the google pixel 6 and then press the square button So that should do it for this setup video and if you have found it useful please give it a thumbs up if you are new here then please do consider subscribing as there will be more videos coming up if you have a game request then please do leave it in the description as i am planning to do follow-up videos with different games to see how they perform so make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified as soon as i release my videos please do follow me on twitter and instagram and like always thanks for watching and I will catch up with you in the next video.